So welcome back to the channel and today I'm with Fred Orrit. Now funny story is this is the first time I actually knew Fred's uh, surname and we've been fishing together for almost three years I think and I've never asked Fred his surname but uh, now we have it. And today uh, with the wind so high we couldn't go fishing, it's way too, way too strong, beautiful day but too much wind, make it very uncomfortable offshore. So today we're going to look at Fred's ski. Now Fred ski is quite unique and we've had a few people make comments on the channel and they've, they're interested to see some of the features of Fred's ski so I'm going to ask Fred uh, to take us through them. Okay Fred um, tell us about your ski and you know why you chose sea do I guess and then you know what have you done? All right um, when my eldest daughter was 21 she wanted to sea do for her 21st birthday so I ended up buying a, a sea do wake and there was a 215 and obviously went fishing on it and had the, the, the eskies on the back as everybody does. And very, very soon I met Paul and then we started... Who's, you know, who's Paul? Me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, so I was a bad influence, eh? You were. So, so we started going out and then I decided Not to, going out, but sort of yeah, fishing, fishing, right? Fishing. <laughs> so, so, I, so then I made my first set of pods, which were on the old red Wake Pro 2008 model. Mm -hmm. And anyway, after a few years, um, CDU released a new new version, the GTXs, and I really liked it. But um, obviously, it took me a few years to find the time and the money to actually go and invest in one. Great. So, I think you had you made some of your own pods on those. What what did you build your own pods, and what what was that? What sort of experience was that like on your on your Wake Pro? The, the Wake Pro pods initially, when I made them, were made out of marine ply and fiberglass and it were very boxy, um, but it proved the concept and it worked very well. Uh, when I got the new one, I um, found a new material called Nidacore. And, and using that, it is um, very light and it also has buoyancy built into it. So, so it's extremely strong, but very, very light. Um, this is obviously has been a, a test um, set of pods. And so they've been modified a few times, but uh, the concepts proved I've done about 67 hours out on the, on the bay with them um, in nice flat conditions and extreme conditions. Yeah, a couple of times you've been out with us. It's been a bit more extreme, hasn't it, than flat, that's for sure. And so, you know, this yeah. is all tried and tested and proven and they rock solid, so. So any uh, mishaps along the way? Um, I, I had a, a slight mishap one day. I, I had a, a few bolts come loose mm. and, and that resulted in, in, a, in a minor change in the design but um, that made it infinitely stronger. So the whole yeah. idea of going out every weekend or every second weekend is to product test. Great. Okay, so maybe we should just go through the yep. through what you've done to your ski. Generally, I'll just jump forward. I bought allowance. I used to have a Garmin, but I made the decision several years ago when I bought the ski that I wanted to put some sort of trolling motor on here. Mm -hmm. So I went to allowance. Um, obviously, motor guide allowance or owned Altogether. by Mercury, mm -hmm. so, um, and then with the NMEA cables, um, they talk to each other. Right. So essentially I can go, go to my cursor, I can find fish, and the motor will take me an or, lock, or spot lock or whatever I want to do. The, the motor is great, it it's adds 18 kilograms to the front of the ski. You can notice it a little bit, but um, the benefits are massive. Great, and the bracket I assume you made this Yes, it's um, made out of, out of stainless steel, 316. It looks solid. Prototype. It's really, really solid. It, it's, it doesn't move. The motor comes off in two minutes. Yeah, so easy to use and it, it doesn't intrude anywhere. What's the actual specs on the motor that you, you've, you've chose? Well, this one particularly, 12 volt, 50 pound thrust, which is more than enough. It's only a small jet ski. Um, and obviously you had to have spot lock. So to deploy the motor, I push, push the bracket down. Grab the yellow line, pull that, which releases the lever, slide the motor, and it, by gravity, it just pulls up. And then it will, it's on the trailer, but it'll lock in place. Great. So from there, it's deployed, obviously much further down in the water, um, but I can't do it on the trailer. And let's, uh, let's do the opposite now. Show us how you pull it if you're in the water. Okay, so from in the water, what I do is I pull, it, pull the yellow cord, which pushes the bracket down, pull that down, twist that 90 degrees, pull it back, it's locked in place, put the bracket in place. As simple as that. 
All right, so in, in here I've got a bait, bait tank on that side, and this side is a spare tank which could be used for bait, but I've, I've got my 12 volt lithium battery in it. So obviously in there there's a battery and motor guide 60 amp fuse, which is waterproof, so that's all fine. Duck bill drain at the end, so if any water does drain in from the rod holders, it comes out here automatically. Great. Uh, obviously the Lawrence system, um, my lights, my bilge pump, my headlight and master switch. So I pull master switch, everything turns on, the radio's there, nice and easy, it fits very well, it's out of the way. And um, obviously the Lawrence through the NMEA operates the motor guide. You've got a trolling motor on all this, all this console here, uh, Fred, so can you still lift up this, this hatch? Yeah, it's standard c do push levers in, and it, everything, yeah. everything lifts up. Everything lifts up forward. So all standard c do slams down, and nothing changes. Normal stuff. Uh, USB, full charge in the phone. So these, the switches, I've tried cheap ones, I've tried lots of different ones. At the end of the day, these are marine switches made out of brass and um, they simple push-pull design. Um, it's the only ones that work and last so tested and, and guaranteed to work. All right, so tell us about your pods then. All right, the pods are obviously in evolution, um, all made out of nitrocore, very, very light. They weigh about 12 kilograms each. Um, oh, that's light. They are super, super strong and um, mounted with seven, eight bolts on each side. Right. So yeah. It's your secret sauce, isn't it? So we're not going to show you that. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it's um, obviously a couple of years of, of testing of, of different ways of mounting them, but there's no brackets, there's no bars outside of the skis, there's, no, there's nothing on the back. It's all fairly open um, and easy to use. Obviously, Railblazer, excellent gear, use it for, this is one of the best things. Cup holder, Cup holder, coffee. But the cup holder also has got slots in it, so you can hang fishing lures off it, anything else off, and you put sinkers in there when you need to. So that works really well. And over here, homemade, homemade other Railblazer, infamous knife that cut me. <laughs> very Jeez, sharp. That's, that's a knife. <laughs> it's, it, it's very good. And pliers well used but they sit in there and easy to use you don't have to worry about them bouncing out they stay there awesome all right so on the pods obviously inside there's a there's obviously a lot of space and um, carpet on the floor to help um, protect stuff and obviously i've got shelves on both sides uh here's a live bait tank that's huge what have you done with that one so, so to ensure we don't have too much weight, we've actually got different levels of um, plugs and we've drilled holes through them. So you can either put a solid one in there and put this one at the top or leave that one out. But <laughs> what, what that'll do is allow you to regulate two different levels of bait. You can either have the water at that level or at the higher level. Pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. This is the live pickup mm -hmm. fr from when you're moving, it's not hooked up to the jet. It's, it is a pickup from the bottom of the ski. Right. And the other side, obviously, is the Rulemate um, bilge pump. Um, expensive little suckers, but this is the only one that works. And obviously, when when you stop and the water rises, then the float mechanism in here activates and it automatically pumps water into the bait tank. Right. So it's all auto. Very nice. All right, so if you, if, you don't want to, if you don't want to use the, the live bait tank, you can put other stuff in here in order to ensure that there's no water in there. Um, turn off the, the water pickup and turn the electrical switch off for the bilge pump. All right, so this is obviously the mount for the Lawrence transducer. Um, it works up to 60 kilometers an hour. So it, it, I finally got the right spot for it and it works exceptionally well. No, no drilling of holes, it just bolts on. So yeah, I heard I've heard the um, few people discussing that the uh, internal ones on the on the Fish Pro are a bit average, and they looking for solutions for rear mounting in a lot of cases. Yep. So yeah, this is one you've made yourself again. Yep. And it's something I'm looking at to supply down the track. Um, the other thing is, 
Lawrence obviously doesn't doesn't come with CDUs. Right. Yep. But if you want a solution that works with a trolling motor, Lawrence is your, is your obviously preferred setup. You're also working on something something else. What's that? Yeah. Well, when we we go out, obviously we we do 120 plus kilometres a day. I've uh, got a 70, 70 litre fuel tank in the jet ski, which is not enough. Um, the pods can take 10 litre fuel drums, but I, I've got a much better solution. Show, so, me, show me what that is. Take off the standard seat. Bring in the new seat. Hook up the connectors, colour coded, obviously. So what was that? One's the drain, which goes down into the, into the fuel tank. The other one is higher up in the breather. Right. So the tank actually drains with gravity. Mm -hmm. um, it's not drained with suction. Um, as, this, this, as this tank uses the CDU OEM system for, as a breather. Great. Well, I'll show you how to take off the fuel tank. Yep. So un undo the connectors, release it. That's the fuel tank off. I'm up here, LVC, take off the seat. There's two connectors here, yep. which you'll just connect back together in, in a U-turn. Oh, okay. Yep. And then this just pops out and you just put a replacement plug in. So, you don't, yeah, you, if you want to remove this, it's a piece of cake. doesn't yes. affect anything. Yep. Can be removed totally. Awesome. Well, cool. what are you doing there? All right, we're going to do a bit of testing. So, what are these? These, these are the same material, similar shape, but a earlier version. Okay. Well, what are you going to do with that hammer? Well, should I be worried? <laughs> we're going to see how much force to take. Well, that's pretty good. <laughs> it's stronger. <laughs> so, handles more than handles what you're going to bump in the jet ski. Okay, give us your, your, your top things you like about the Sea Doo um, as a brand, as a, and this model as a ski, and then also is there any negatives that you, you want to put to the, to the manufacturer? All right, so I like Sea Doo, but that's because I, I started with Sea Doo. So, for me, the big thing about Sea Doo is obviously this model is the fact you can take the rear seat off, you've got a flat deck. That is, that is the best feature. First of all, secondly, it rides extremely well in the water, and thirdly, you've got the storage in the center console. Uh, for me, that's a game changer, and essentially, I don't use a storage under here except for my food and my drinks when I go out, my first aid kit, and my battery starter. All my fishing gear and everything remains in the pods, um, and obviously, my fuel's in the fuel tank. So mm -hmm. I. I I don't, even, I don't even fill up one of these completely yeah. when, when I go out. And one, one of the things just about pods too, I guess, is that you haven't got that rear air ski to worry about. So if you ever have to come in off the, off the back of the ski, which you have recently when you <laughs> climbed onto my ski, um, you don't have to climb over and uh, risk uh, a, um, injuring yourself yes. or moving rods or damaging equipment. So uh, it's great having the rear deck cleared, isn't it? Well, the, the rear deck's great for obviously climbing in and out. Also, I've got the ladder so you can step back in. That the other thing is, if you're catching fish, and I was doing this last weekend, you can just pull fish straight in off the back. How about negatives? Is there any negatives about CD that you'd want to bring up? Yeah, look, uh, for me, some of the plastics are, are not the best. Um, they, they get, now the people have commented, they get damaged or marked with suntan lotion, or simple things. Uh, there's little UV protection on the plastics. Mm -hmm. um, and the only other thing is that the, the centre storage is not waterproof. Right. That's the biggest disappointment, that you, you cannot actually put stuff in there that you want to keep dry. Okay, so they don't seal that lid at all. Is that the problem? Yeah, so, I'll just pop it. Yeah, it's one thing, even my front console, my <laughs> Yamaha, it has got seals, rubber seals, and it yep. is actually not too bad. So, so, without the pods, if I, when I was taking this out, I could turn the jet ski and I could bury the nose in the water, and the water will run in here, and then, if you come around and have a look, you'll see the, the front lip there is open. See how the side oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the front lip is open? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. see the sun through there, yeah. And because of that, 
water comes into the into the into that storage. little pocket there. And does it drain at the bottom? It does drain. Okay. But it just, yeah, things will get wet. It'll yep. probably fill up and it'll take a while to drain or something. And, yeah. Oh, it drains pretty quickly. Okay. Um, there's yep. lots of holes. But it'd be wonderful if this was actually a dry storage area. Um, and the other thing is when you, when, when you lift this up, you get water that sits in here that runs down and trickles as well. But, right. But, you know, that's not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is that the storage area is not dry. But, you know, for yeah. me, my lunchbox, Esky, my drinks bottle, Esky, as I said, my first aid kit and my battery starter, which I've learned to, to take one along. <laughs> um, always good. Always sits in there. Excellent. Well, that's the run through of the uh, GTX uh, with the pods, Fred's wonderful little machine. And so thanks very much, Fred, for uh, showing us through the, through the machine. It's, it's, it's awesome for fishing and I'm sure um, you've got more improvements to come. Yes, yes, obviously GTX is a fantastic machine best thing is it runs on 91 octane and it's got 50 more horsepower than a Yamaha. <laughs> uh, it's like the old Ford versus Holden isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when we go out I think we've, we've measured it both you and I have filled up and started we do the same trips and um, we run 64, 85 litres and pretty much the Yamaha the old version and my CD GD, GDX 230 identical fuel yeah, economy. Same fuel, fuel consumption yeah yeah. And my ski's topping out, fully loaded, laden with everything, motor at 95 to 100 kilometres an hour. Oh, so there's no real noticeable problems. Oh, a fraction slow right. down, but... Yeah, but hey, we're carrying yeah. a lot of gear and you're going fishing, we're not going racing, right? Yep, correct. Yeah, and, yeah. We, and when you get airborne, sometimes you can notice where, how you've loaded your ski. That's the only <laughs> so, difference. Yeah. So how about going crossing bars? Oh, it's, there's no difference. It's, the power's great, same as the Yamaha's. It's, it's a breeze. Yep. So the, you're, handling wise, you're, you're comfortable you're crossing bars? Yes, so, absolutely. Yep. Great. Yeah, I guess last time we went out, we went out through uh, South Passage Bar here and uh, we had a bit of swell running, didn't we? We had about a two metre swell running and you seemed to handle it with you know, pretty much ease like we did. So yep. no dramas at all. All right, well, thanks again, mate. Yeah, right, thank to, you. Good to uh, yeah, see through your ski. And, yep. um, and thanks for watching the channel and I'll catch you next time. All right, cheers. Bye.